So ladies, let's have a talk woman to woman about the power of being a woman. Over the next few days, I'm going to be sharing some pieces of the book with you so that your curiosity will be piqued enough to pre-order, get a couple copies for your friends, maybe start even a book club, because this is going to be a serious conversation about who we are, what we are, and how to wield our power in the right way. Is God interested in women? Does he see us as inferior, superior, or in between? All these thoughts and more are thoughts that we're going to tackle together as we take the journey through the power of being a woman. Well, in chapter one, I start off with a poem that I want to share with you, and then we'll um, just have a few words and thoughts before I sign off for today. This is how it goes. Somewhere between her home and a placard demanding equal rights, she got lost. Wandering past the garden, following where the serpent pointed, she turned left instead of right and got off track. And though the scenery looked vaguely familiar, a frown of consternation began to crease her brow as she realized it was taking her far too long to reach her desired destination. Still, she determined to go yet another mile before turning off her chosen path. Perhaps she was getting too anxious. And as she wandered, looking for a marker to get her bearings, man wondered where she'd gone. As she ventured too far to hear his need for her or her children crying, and they too lost their way, trying to follow her, misled by traces of her perfume in the air, the memory of a gentle touch, an encouraging word, a piece of fabric soft to the skin and sage advice were found along the path now littered with confusion and distrust. And as man's shoulders began to slope in resignation, weakening his arms, causing him to abdicate his seat as protector, and her children began to find their own way, allowing new friends of rebellion to fill the space she left behind, a cry rang out. It filled the earth. It reached the skies and rang throughout the heavens. Woman, where art thou? Woman, where art thou? Woman, where art thou? It echoed off the mountaintops and stretched across the plains. It descended throughout the valleys, this plaintive cry mourning the absence of this precious lost treasure. And she, hearing the cry, came to a halt. Not quite sure of where she stood, unable to give her location, she turned looking for her own footprints in the sand. And somewhere between her struggle to recall her true identity and the place of her restoration, she saw visions of a man with sad eyes, longing for her love, praying for her return, and children with their arms outstretched crying for her wisdom to save them. But she had grown weary from the journey. Sadness rooting her to the spot, depression bowing her into herself, she succumbed to her fatigue, sinking into a deep and fitful sleep. And in the distance, the ring of hammers began hesitantly, building and building again, until it reverberated throughout the land its sharp rhythm piercing the hearts of men, awakening sleeping women and frustrated children as wanted signs were posted by determined hands in search of the vanishing woman. The vanishing woman, where are you? You know, uh, when I'm on the talk circuit, speaking at women's conferences, there is always one statement that is uttered to me before the end of that conference by those that I greet at my book table. Inevitably, one woman always says to me, I'm just trying to find myself. To which I always reply, I'm a bit confused because aren't you standing here? But I do get the gist of the statement. But I want us to get rooted in where we are and embrace where we are as women. I know that a lot of us have pressures 
Uh, we are in the workplace. We are in the marketplace. We are juggling home. We're juggling relationships. We're drug juggling a lot of things. And there are songs like I'm every woman ringing in our ears. I am woman. Hear me roar. And yet it seems that we're not living up to any of those statements because we're so critical of ourselves. Well, I just want to encourage you today to just relax. Take a deep breath. You are fearfully and wonderfully made as the word of God says. But guess what? When God created you, he had everything for you in mind from your original design. And guess what else? He equipped you to handle the task at hand. If your yoke is not easy and your burden is not light, you've taken on an assignment that he never gave you. Hug yourself right now and receive that. I've been carrying some stuff that I was not given to carry. And right now I'm releasing it. Just release it and breathe. You know, the art of femininity is something that we've lost between the boardroom and the bedroom. It's hard to make the switch, isn't it? When you're living that high powered life out in the marketplace and you've received the deception that you've got to grow hair on your chest in order to make your mark where you stand. Not true. The power of femininity is a weapon that you can wield artfully and skillfully and live your life in excellence, experiencing the victory that you've always wanted to have. That's what this chapter is all about. It's about God's original design, who you are as a woman, what that means to you personally, and how that's relevant to where you are today. The art of being a woman is not something to lose, but to rediscover and embrace. Look at our world. Take a look around you. Women rising in government. As a matter of fact, it was noted during the pandemic outbreak that the countries that had women leaders did better in handling the crisis than any other nations. Uh, New Zealand, Germany, and now even America with our upcoming new vice president, Kamala Harris. Women are on the move. God is causing us to rise up in places expected as well as unexpected. And yet the Bible has this parade of women marching through it, doing amazing things and difficult feats and overcoming impassable and impossible circumstances to make their mark in society, even back in Bible days. So it's time to just get rid of all the negativity and all the lies and the things that surround us concerning who we are as women. We don't have to be empowered. We are already powerful. We don't have to do power because we are power. But in the days that unfold, I'm going to unlock more of those secrets for you to show you how to embrace the woman that you are, the power that you already possess, and how to use it effectively in your sphere of influence. Does God really value women? Yes, he does. Does he see us as the weaker specimen? No, he does not. Perhaps physically, but not internally, not mentally, not emotionally. A man will be the first to tell you that women are stronger than they are in certain regards. So let's balance our power together. I believe that when God created man and woman, which were done at the same time, by the way, woman was inside of man. When he said, come, let us make man in our image. He created them male and female. So man and woman were created at the same time. The woman nestled inside of the man until God chose to manifest her to the man. Now he waited until a time when he had given Adam his original assignment and then when it was time for that assignment to be carried out, he knew that the man needed help. Now there's been a joke that God had a great idea and he created man and he had a better idea and created woman. <laughs> that may be true. But the point of the matter is that God said that man needed a help meet for him. What that means is someone qualified, certified, and enabled to be the right support system in a great partnership that was supposed to bless the entire world. Don't discount your power. It's time to rediscover it, embrace it, celebrate it, and balance it with your brother, with your husband, with those that are men in our lives, knowing that we bring something to the party that is just as important as what they bring to the world. 
So on that note, I hope I've piqued your curiosity for the first chapter. It's available on Amazon, log on, pre-order. Um, you can get it on Kindle or a print version of The Power of Being a Woman. It's time to power up, ladies. See you tomorrow.